Good morning, New Life Fellowship out there in your homes, enjoying a nice Sunday morning made by our Lord. Aren't we lucky that he loved us enough to give our sunshine, even in the darkest times? I know there are several out there that have birthdays or anniversaries this week. We do actually have some in the audience with us today, even though we're under 10, but Anybody want to come get their birthday candy? Yay! And how old are you, Bailey? 19. And how old are you, Evan? 14. They share the same birthday, even. And we know that Adriana has a birthday, and Arlie Jr. has a birthday. There might be others out there that have a birthday this week. We'll be saving your candy for when we can meet together. I wanted to share with you a few things today, just so you're informed. Obviously, you're not with us in person, but you are with us in spirit. We are praying for you and thinking of you often. As we go through this uncertain time, please be checking your email for Casey's email, the church's Facebook page. Call each other rely on each other, and share your burdens with each other so we can stay informed of each other and of what's going on at the church. Even the Bible talks about be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, and practice hospitality. Hospitality doesn't have to be in person. Call somebody up, offer some love, Offer some encouragement and just let them know that we're thinking about them. Thank you. Good morning, church family. We're going to do a little bit of praise and worship for you here with uh, the McVeighs. And maybe a dog. While we're uh, self-quarantining this morning. song for you. This is called Jesus Messiah. Blessed Redeemer, 
Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from hell, Jesus Messiah, Lord. Good morning! How are you all doing in your quarantine these days? Uh, I'm sorry to say that we don't get to come together at New Life and, and be able to worship and, and fellowship together, at least for a while. But it is nice to know that uh, we can come together by video, that we can have a little bit of worship time, a, a little bit of, of teaching, and hear some announcements just like we would on a Sunday morning. Uh, I do miss being able to fellowship. I miss the, the hugs and the handshakes, and just catching up with folks. So I'm going to ask that uh, in your video this morning, after you watch, that you please comment. Tell us how you're doing. Let us know how God's working in your life through this time where we're all staying home. And, and I pray that you're being safe and that you're doing well. But this morning, I do, wanted to, I do want to continue our regular service. Uh, we've been talking about questions that people have about the Bible. We've talked about God, we've talked about Jesus, we, we've talked about the Bible itself, but this week I wanted to take a different approach, a, a little bit deeper question that I know I've heard some people ask this question. They asked, is hell real? Well, if you got your Bible handy, you're sitting at home, I'll give you a minute to open up that Bible. Turn to Luke chapter 16, verse 22. But while you're doing that, I want to sh share with you the results of an interesting survey that I found. In 2018, a LifeWay survey asked 3,000 Americans what they thought about various religious topics. They asked random Americans what they believed about the Bible, about Jesus, what they believed about sin, what they believed about heaven. You see, in this survey, the majority of the respondents believed in varying degrees in each of those topics. Most of the respondents, most of these 3,000 Americans believed in God. Good news is they believed in Jesus. Good news is they believed in heaven. The good news is that most of them knew that, that uh, sin was wrong. But the interesting thing in this survey was not what the majority of people thought about those topics. It was what the minority of people believed about hell. The interesting thing in this survey is that 40% of those people that LifeWay talked to said that they believed that hell is an eternal place of judgment where God sends all people who do not personally trust in Jesus Christ. Hell is an eternal place of judgment where God sends all people who do not personally trust in Jesus Christ. You see, LifeWay used this specific sentence, gave the respondents this sentence, and asked them, do you agree with this statement? Far fewer than asking people what they thought about Jesus, whether they believed in God, whether they believed in heaven, far fewer agreed on this sentence more than anything else that... LifeWay asked in that survey, and only 40% said that they believe in hell. So why is that? Why are people more willing to believe in God, more willing to believe in Jesus, more willing to believe in heaven than in hell? I think it comes to a bottom line question that most people have, is hell real? 
Well, that's what I want to look at today. So if you've got your Bible ready, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 16. And this is Jesus. And, and here's an interesting thing, talking about Jesus. Did you know that Jesus speaking in the Gospels, the four Gospels that we have recorded of Jesus, Jesus spoke about hell more than any other person in the entire Bible. If you count up all the verses that Jesus spoke about hell, he actually spoke about hell more often than he spoke about heaven. Well, let's look at Luke chapter 16. This is from uh, Luke chapter 16, if you're ready, with verse 22. The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire." And this is just part of the account where Jesus was explaining through the story of Lazarus and the rich man what it was like to be in hell. In this account, he goes on in verse 25 and he says, But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. If people are wondering, is, is hell real? real? I think Jesus' story here, Jesus' account of Lazarus and the rich man can kind of give us an indication of what heaven hell. is like. You see, the question of, is, is heaven hell. is real, Jesus addresses by describing Hades. Hades is really the New Testament word from the Greek for, the, for what we would term hell today. So what did Jesus say that Hades would be like? In verse 23, he said that, the rich man was living in torment in Hades. Abraham was far away from Hades. Jesus even said that there was a great chasm that has been set in place between where Abraham was and Hades. And he tried to explain in his story that those who want to go from here cannot, and nor can anyone cross over from there. Sounds like Hades, hell, is a place that we would want to avoid at all costs. In this story, Jesus uses these descriptions to really address what Hades, what hell is like. But if Jesus spoke so often about hell in the Gospels, what else did Jesus have to say besides what we just saw here in Luke chapter 16? If you got your Bible still open, uh, we're going to be flipping around. If you'd like to, to flip around with me, or if you'd just like to, to wait to the end and, and see what we put up on the screen, that's fine. I know that you're sitting at home right now, so might be comfortable just to, to sit in your PJs and, and have your Bible handy and, and flip over. So what did Jesus have to say about hell? Well... In Matthew chapter 25, he described hell as a place where there is an eternal fire. In Matthew chapter 3, he said this fire is unquenchable. Uh, Matthew uh, and Mark uh, kind of addressed the same idea. He said that this fire is not quenched. And in where the fire will, this fire will never go out. Again in Mark. In Mark chapter 9, verse 48, he even said something interesting about this place in hell. Talking about the, the dead and, and the people who are there, 
He said, the worms that eat them do not die. Some Bible translation call these worms maggots. These maggots that eat on the dead do not die. Matthew chapter 13, Jesus also says that in this place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Each of these descriptions that we've looked at sounds like a place where I would not want to be. Hell is something to avoid at all costs, if possible. So, to get back to that original question, only 40% of people that Lifeway asked said that hell is a real place. So the question for us today, is hell really a place? Is it real? Well, the short answer is yes. And the reason is because if we look at the verses that we just saw in Luke, where Jesus was talking about Lazarus and the rich man, if we look throughout the Gospels at all the times that Jesus references hell and describes what it's like, hell is a real place just for the mere fact that Jesus said that it was. See, kind of the interesting thing about that Lifeway survey is that so many people, much larger percentage of people, say they believe in Jesus than believe in hell, but they're kind of doing a disservice then if they do believe in Jesus. Because Jesus believed and talked about hell being a real place. How then could they not see that hell is real? If Jesus thought it was, if Jesus taught that it is, it must be a real place. As a matter of fact, as a believing Christian, who knows Jesus as Lord and Savior? Jesus actually understands that heaven is real so much that he gave his life on the cross for us. If hell is so eternally painful and it is real, how then can we avoid it? How can we avoid ending up in hell? Well, that sacrifice that Jesus made for us is the answer. The Apostle Paul was writing to the Romans and kind of answered that question of how can we avoid hell. In Romans chapter 10, starting in verse 9, Paul was writing to them and he says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. See, hell is real. Jesus knows that hell is real. And he knows it so much that he died on the cross so that we would have an opportunity to not end up there, to not be there. He loves us so much that he died on the cross so that we can avoid it. And the way that we avoid it is just by what Paul said here. Confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. And he said it is by believing that we are made right with God and it is by confessing that we are saved. So since hell is real, my last question to you is have you made Jesus your Lord? 
Have you believed in your heart? Have you confessed in your mouth that Jesus is Lord? If you haven't, then it's a simple thing. Ask Jesus into your life. Give your life to him. I just ask you today, in lieu of our normal invitation time, in lieu of our, our, our prayer and our closing, where we get to invite people to come forward and respond to God's call, I know that you're all sitting at home right now watching our video on your desktop monitor, on your phones, however it is that you're listening today. I ask you, have you made Jesus Lord of your life? And if you haven't, there's no better time than right now to ask him into your life. Pray, Lord, I am a sinner. I know that you died on the cross for my sin. And Father, I just ask you to be Lord of my life. I accept you as Savior. I confess my sin right now to you and ask you to save me from hell. I pray that right now, this morning. If you've made that prayer, if you have accepted Jesus as your Savior this morning, this day, please let me know. I would love to hear that great news with you. And if you have already accepted Jesus as your Savior, it's great news for you every day. And I just want to remind all of you that we're going to continue making these videos from week to week as often as we need to for the upcoming weeks to be able to share God's good news with you. Since we can't meet here each Sunday morning, we're going to be meeting with you by video. And I thank you for meeting with us this morning. Let's pray and close our time. Father, we just come before you. We thank you for just your love for us. We thank you for your protection of us. And I know that, Father, there are, are people that are, are worried about this virus and, and worried about things going on in our society today. But, Father, instead of worrying about organizations and institutions, we just come to you and trust in you. We trust in your protection. We trust in your greatness. So, Father, I just pray a special uh, protection around everybody of New Life Fellowship. And I pray, Father, that you help us to just turn to you during this time and look at how you are blessed us and how you keep us. I pray in your name. Amen.